You know you're a San Diego local when you keep your surfboard in your car. Hey guys, thanks for watching Tamara's Travels. I did want to give you a little bit of a warning because this video is a little bit longer than my normal videos. That's because I've decided to give you a lot more detail where to park, how much things cost, where exactly to go stop by stop in Northern La Jolla. I also give you a overall of a map and I'm giving you links to all the places I recommend in La Jolla. I used to live there so I'm very familiar with the area and I have a lot of footage. Um, and so this video, again, is great for someone who just wants to see what La Jolla looks like. Also great if you're planning a trip and you want to know exactly where to go, where to eat, where to park, and what things look like. And today, I'm going to be showing you my own backyard. In this part of my travel journey, I am in La Jolla, San Diego, California, USA. And this is part two of my La Jolla travel guide. So the first part of my travel guide I showed you around La Jolla Cove, downtown La Jolla. Downtown La Jolla is about 30 minutes north of downtown San Diego. So I recommend doing La Jolla in at least two days if you have time. Um, you can do this all in one day, you're just going to have to skip some things. So I will show you what I would do if you're doing northern La Jolla in one day. I'm going to be also showing you some tips and tricks of how to visit San Diego on a friendly college student budget. All right, let's go. So I would start my travel here at Caroline Seaside Cafe. It's actually my favorite cafe to visit in San Diego only because it has this beautiful pier you can see and all the servers are right here. And this cafe is pretty high up and you get this beautiful view of the surfers and the beach while enjoying your coffee. And I'm gonna put all the links to all these places and the addresses in the description box below so you can just click on those links for more details. Of course, I was here before COVID, so things probably have changed a lot. <laughs> Luckily, a lot of La Jolla is all outdoors and San Diego is a lot more open than most of the country. So it's actually still a really great place to travel uh, even during this pandemic. If you are not at risk. Uh, this has a beautiful view of the ocean and it's pretty affordable. The fruit's okay. I really just go there for their coffee to be honest. Um, they don't really have, it's more like a Starbucks -y type place. Like their, you know, muffins or whatever are okay. But if you want real food, go to the cottage. But if you just want a coffee, definitely see uh, Caroline Seaside Cafe. And it's really cool because actually there's a pier right here and you can watch the surfers uh, while you drink your coffee. At Caroline Seaside Cafe and the pier there's um, a paid parking lot if you don't want to walk far but all along right here in the side street especially on La Jolla Shores Drive um, there's always free parking there you just have to look for street cleaning signs after enjoying my coffee you can go down to the beach if you want you can take a picture by the pier this is super popular for photos and then I would go over to the Birch Aquarium. Here's the pricing. If you are a Bank of America member, it's free today. And again, the links will be in the description below. There is a free parking lot here, so no need to worry about parking. And here is some of the highlights of the Birch Aquarium. Apparel. If you guys are not a bird world, this is a good thing. Those stingers are so cool looking. And there's some really cool sharks here. I think it's a fish.
tide pools here are the fun part because you get to touch the water. Yeah, it's so sticky. Oh, it's like a fun interactive mix and a beautiful view of Malay Shores. I got it. What is it? It's a sea cucumber. A sea cucumber. So it's like a slug? Sort of. It's kind of, kind of related to sea slugs. And if you're hungry, you can always grab a quick bite at Splash Cafe. If you have time, I would then go to UCSD. Now, the problem with UCSD is the parking is expensive and it sucks to find parking around here. So, I would either park along Genesee here or over in this area. There's a lot of parking and then you can just walk across the street. Uh, right here, there is a bus stop. All along here there are bus stops and there are free buses all throughout the UCSD campus. There are two main things you want to visit. Geisel Library which is a long library walk. Uh, as you can see it's super futuristic looking. It was actually a model they used for Inception for their crazy futuristic buildings. And then you just a really short walk to Warner um, Warner College and then you'll see here or right here is called Fallen Star which is this crazy little tiny house off the top of the building just so you know this normally is only open two days a week usually I believe Tuesdays and Thursdays and only for a few hours so you have to check the UCSD website to see when this Fallen Star house is actually open otherwise you only get to see it from the outside when you go to Geisel Library, I highly recommend going inside and heading up to the top floor, which I believe is the seventh floor. It has amazing panoramic views of the campus, and you can also see the ocean, which is pretty cool. So from there, I highly recommend. Um, personally, I would actually continue going up and then come back. But right here is Glider Port and Black's Beach. So Torrey, Point, uh, Torrey Pines Glider Port, obviously there's gliders go off of here, they're fun to watch. They also have a really great little photo op area right here. This is Torrey Pines Glider Port. And there he goes! It's always fun to watch them gliding around. So as you make your way north, there's of course the famous Torrey Pines Golf Course, which apparently is world renowned, has a lot of tournaments there. I'm not personally a golfer, I've never gone to this golf course, um, so I can't tell you much about it except that it's really famous and supposed to be really good. So further up here, is 
This is all Tory Pine, so there's a lot of um, hiking trails, so it really just depends on how much time you have, whether you're just spending one day in La Jolla, whether you're spending multiple days, because um, there's, like I said, lots of hike trails. I personally go up to the North Beach. Uh, you can park in a lot, but personally, um, it costs money, so I just park in these neighborhoods over here, and then just walk across the street. So to park here, there is a $15 fee. However, if you drive about three minutes this direction, there is free street parking, and so I'm gonna find some street parking instead. So if you just park here, instead of here, it's free. the coaster Amtrak. Another huge benefit to parking on the street instead of in the actual parking lot is that they lock the gates at sunset. So if you're running a little late, your car might get locked in. And on the street, there's no time limit. You can stay there as long as you want and it doesn't cost you $15. Behind me is part of the state reserve and it's some bluffs. I think in season three I'm going to show you guys a lot more of America and then 
hopefully get to do some international travel this year, but I don't know if it's going to happen schedule-wise. I really want to go to Cuba and Israel, but I don't think it'll be able to happen until next year, and I want to do Central America as well. So we'll see. Stay tuned, but I will be showing you at least California, most of California, and I will be doing some East Coast stuff, some uh, Philadelphia, New York, definitely Maryland, Delaware, maybe go down to Virginia, Florida, we'll see. I really want to go to like Alaska, Maine, I've never been to those Love places. Vegas. I've been to Vegas, Hawaii. I haven't filmed Vegas yet, so maybe I'll go back to Vegas and do a episode of how to do Vegas right. Gorgeous view. Like, look at this. Amazing. Wow, this ravine is so beautiful. So, here's Dory Pines Lodge, and apparently, it's also the visitor center. So, I'm here at the lodge, and this is. Are you a volunteer? Or I'm you? a volunteer, a oh. docent, Steve Neal. Awesome. And can you tell me a little bit about this building? Yeah, this building was completed by. By Ellen Browning Scripps had a commission in 1923 and it was opened as a restaurant because the little road out in front here was the first paved road between LA and San Diego. So it was paved in 1915 and this restaurant was opened in 1923. And what is it used as now? Now it's the visitor center slash the ranger station. So we have about 200 volunteers like myself that help the rangers out. Yeah, it's just a free exhibit. We'll sell a few trinkets and t-shirts and stuff. And it's got a great view out the back. And uh, anymore, it's illegal in the state of California to, for a taxidermist to even mount a mountain lion, because just an extra layer of protection, and kind of make sure it, none of them get killed. Um, so one of the only mountain lion taxidermied. <laughs> yeah, if you actually go down to Mission Trails Park in South San Diego, they have a replica mountain lion. So why did they pave the road? Well, the Panama Canal had just been dug in 1914, and in downtown San, uh, San Diego at Balboa Park, they decided to have an exposition for a couple years, about half the museum buildings were built at that time, and it was the Panama, California Exposition. Mm -hmm. So they thought, maybe if we pave the road, more people will come to our exposition from up north. So mm -hmm. that's when the road got paved. The road now is a historic landmark. It's the original concrete from here on going south, and it's no cars on that part of the road. Cool. There you go. If you stop here at the Torrey Pines Lodge before you start hiking Torrey Pines, then they have nice little maps you can take and they can give you suggestions of what trails to do, especially if you're on a limited time and you want to know which is the best trails or how difficult they are. This is a great resource and of course it's free. So a cool little fact, the Torrey Pine, which is right here, are one of the rarest pine trees in the United States. And this is one of the only locations, there's apparently only two locations, it's located, which is here, and then uh, pretty far north in Northern California, there was a few Torrey Pines. So that's why it's called Torrey Pines. Pretty cool. I had no clue. I don't know why I thought like Torrey was just a name in front of Pines. I didn't realize Torrey is the name of a pine. Group 
kind is so beautiful. It's great for taking photos and videos. So make sure you bring your good camera when you go here. Bring good hiking shoes because there are so many amazing trails up here. But if you don't want to do any of the trails, you can just walk on the beach. There's also a lot of nature at the reserve and you see some really cute animals. I mean, look at this guy. He's eating these flowers. He's just so adorable. I can literally watch him for hours, but don't worry, I won't bore you guys. I'm not personally normally a bird watcher, but the birds were pretty cool to watch here. They are flying in these formations and it was just so calming. Wow, the traffic going north looks insane. A lot of people during rush hour live in the northern part of San Diego and they all commute in from downtown. So definitely you want to um, make sure you try to avoid that crazy rush hour traffic and get here before 3.30 when people are getting off from work. Driving south though was no problem. I do also have to say that the drive is really nice because you see a lot of the coastline and then you also get to see some of the rock cliffs as you're driving back. Hey, hey, before you go, be sure to subscribe below and click the thumbs up button. This helps my channel grow and so I can continue making these videos. Let me know if you like this more educational style video where I give you all the details of where to park, showing you the maps of where everything is, instead of me just walking around and showing the spots, showing you how to get there. Um, if you like this type of video, comment below so I will make more of these. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next time.